hey y'all, let's do this. All right, uh, basically this is going to be like 50% of an exam two in a college chem one course. Um, if you get all this down, you should be should be good to go. So um, radius, effective nuclear charge, electron affinity. Basically, I'm going to throw it on out there. Here's all you really need to know. Pop these two arrows down, and you know that the radius uh, increases from top to bottom, from top to bottom, and it increases from uh, uh, right to left. Um, and you just follow this trend. It's the same for right to left. Um, the effective nuclear charge here decreases, electron affinity decreases, electronegativity decreases, ionization energy decreases. Basically everything can be explained because of this right here. Everything can be explained based on that. And let me uh, let me pop down some definitions real quick. The radius is the average distance from the nucleus uh, to the to the valence electrons. And basically, you can think about it as a as a relationship. Uh, you know, some people say, you know, the closer, the farther away, uh, the hearts that are the hell do they say? They say hearts that are far away or something grow fond. <laughs> Either way, you can think about it. You know, that doesn't really happen. People break up the farther they get away. So your radius, uh, the farther your valence electrons are, the more likely those electrons are going to be uh, given away. Your effective nuclear charge uh, is the actual attractive force felt by any one electron. So um, right here would be the effective nuclear charge. This is your protons, and this would be your shielding electrons. Um, and basically your shielding electrons are any E that is not a valence electron. Okay, and this is the short and skinny version of it. I know there's one that's called Slater's Rule, and uh, he gets really specific with it, and it's a more accurate determination, but this is a good estimate right here. Electron affinity, now people get this mixed up with electronegativity like all day long. I see so many videos on YouTube, it's, it's pathetic. Um, basically, electron affinity is actual the actual energy released uh, when an electron is added to an isolated atom. Okay, the atom's all by itself in a gas state, all right? Um, and it's measured in negative, ne negative kilojoules per mole. And the negative uh, negative sign really just means released. Okay, so the more negative, the more negative it is, the more energy is released. What I always do is don't even don't even look at the negative sign. Don't even look at the negative sign. Okay, whatever. Just look at kilojoules per mole. Okay, what's the magnitude of it? What's the value? Is it 100? Is it 200? Is it zero? Is it 500? Okay, okay, 500 is greater, all right? So then you just read it, 500 kilojoules per mole is released with the negative, all right? Ionization energy, basically the opposite of um, electron affinity, and it's defined as the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an isolated neutral atom in the gas state. Uh, and it's and it's measured in, in kilojoules per mole. It's energy. These are both... It's, it's a measurement of energy that's required or either um, in the case of ionization it's required and in the case of electron affinity it's released and uh, so the positive is absorbed or required energy uh, and then electronegativity which people get mixed up with electron affinity but they are two different things uh, electronegativity is, is the ability of an uh, attracted uh, an atom to attract bonding electrons toward itself um, and it's on a scale from zero to four you've seen that electron affinity is a measurement of how much energy is released when it gains an electron electronegativity is, is is the ability for an atom to attract bonding electrons uh, and it's on a scale from zero to four where um, fluorine fluorine is the most electronegative and then there's oxygen 
and nitrogen, and that's just the uh, you know greatest to least. And that's just a little short and skinny on that. And uh, of the non-metals, hydrogen is the lowest of the non-metals, um, and fluorine is the highest. Um, and basically, I have one more thing I want to show you that kind of solidifies all of this here, um, if you can understand all this stuff and you can grasp this concept here, you've pretty much got 50 to 70 percent of an exam two on, uh, on, on, in a chemistry one college course. Um, there's a, there's an awesome website called ptables.com and I want to give credit to, uh, to Michael Dea. This is an amazing website. I mean, absolutely just amazing website. Um, as you can see, here's the calculated radius and it's colored, color coordinated right down here at the bottom. And it tells you the, uh, the radius in picometers, right here, picometers. Cesium, um, or cesium is the largest um, of, of this. And you can see that trend. The arrow goes down here, it gets larger, and then it goes this way, it gets larger. And here's ionization energy. As you can see, as it goes this way, it decreases as it this goes this way. It decreases, and you can see the number 375, 403. As it goes down, it decreases. Um, electron affinity, it decreases, going right to left and top to bottom. As you can see right here, 45.5, um, 469, 48. As you can see, it, it decreases as you go down, 72 and 59. You can see that. Electronegativity, as I said, is a scale from zero to four. Fluorine is the most electronegative, um, and and that also um, decreases as you go from right to left and and top to bottom. Uh, and I believe that. Oh, one more thing. I did want to I did want to point out one thing here. Um, there's an exception right here to this rule. Here's the exception. Group five A. Group 5A for electron affinity is an exception, and basically, um, there, and there's some other exceptions and stuff like that, but I'll just point this one out real quick. 5A, group 5A is an exception because the electron configuration, the electron configuration of the group, um, of the group um, 5A there, if you could look at, if you think of nitrogen, you got um, 2S2, 2p, okay, there's three orbitals, you have an electron in each one of these. Electron affinity is energy released to add one. If you if you put an electron here, there's going to be some electron-electron repulsion. So this if this would be for nitrogen, if this is carbon here, you got 2p, 2, 1, 1. And this is, um, this is uh, uh, carbon. It's more favorable, actually, for carbon to add one, add an electron because it has an empty orbital. If nitrogen compared to carbon adds an electron here, there's going to be some electron-electron repulsion. Thus is why, if you look at this number, the energy released is, is, is 7 kilojoules when it adds one because it takes more energy to add it. And carbon it is, is, um, releases more energy than that based on that electron configuration, that orbital diagram. And that's why, that's why. There's an exception right here to this. But this is a great website, P Tables by uh, Michael Dea. And uh, over and out, man. Hope this helped out.